smell of animals, maybe just like you. And maybe you are sad as I about what some go through. About how it feels to be born in a cage. To be torn away from your mom at few hours of age. How it feels when they take you to damage your body to make you easier to manage. How it feels to live in chains without names, just numbered like your days you may spend in this prison for the innocent. But hope ceases long before the end. Long before they are slaughtered in hell by humans who suffer as well. Even if labeled organic, they get slayed in fear and panic to rest in peace on the plate. One day I learned that we could live without it. Ain't that great? Humans can live thrilling lives without killing. Ain't this some of the most relieving news we have ever been receiving? But then, why can't just someone come and do something about it? Many of us voice that what we eat is our free choice. So, if our choice is free, why do we choose cruelty? Does our mind say that's okay? Or is it an unquestioned habit we strengthen every day because everyone acts this way? How else could it be that once we see reality, we all miss the peace? Passion is silence and buried underneath the worry of missing cheese. Or could it be that someone is me? How hard would it be to live on plants? Let's see. So I tried cheese made of yeast and a vegan substitute for milk, for silk, and many kinds of food. Had a new take on baking a cake and so it brought me, but experience taught me that's so much easier than I thought we can if anything once we arrange the change. So I found plants that carry the flavor I favor or embrace a new taste. And if I look back and listed what I used to eat, honestly, I never missed it. And then I read and I felt wealthy that listening to my heart can literally keep it healthy. The more shocking thing to read was that we harm not only those we breed and farm. We eat the homes of living souls who sleep in trees and leaves and holes until the sun will be emblazing plants that we destroy for grazing lands and soy to feed animals to eat their meat. There's nothing for which we use as much land as for producing life we strive to end. While biodiversity loss is a major danger, the land use change also is a climate changer. Every tree that died through fire clearing emitted carbon dioxide. And scientists are fearing that even if we stop burning coal, we were unable to reach our climate goal because of what's on our table. Another important carbon sink are the oceans and the life within. But populations are rapidly declining, doomed to die for a dining room, sentient beings and fishing nets suffocate, though many won't even end up on the plate. By catching bycatch and seafood, we massively contribute to the massive loss of species and we pollute the seas when we catch. Ghost nets make up half of the great garbage patch. The good thing about these systems is that we're not bound to their persistence. We can turn around. Imagine we did not proceed. Imagine no one had to bleed. Studies show that nature could still regrow if we now began to plant another seed. 
So, if everyone who can ate plants instead of meat, we'd get a new chance for our climate-saving plants. We'd save tons of methane, laughing gas and CO2. It would be healthy for the soil, the sea and for us too. And if we planted each seed to grow food, not to feed, but to eat, we'd get enough to meet every human's need. And while the older and the younger could be released from hunger, we could release an area as big as Africa that we no longer need if there's no livestock to feed. This is an enormous lever for species conservation and for limiting the world's fever through reforestation. It's crazy what we could achieve through eating beans instead of beef. Of course, with your lunch it won't be done. We need good cheap food for everyone. Understanding that farmers don't want to harm us. We need to assist them with transforming their system. We need decisions of politicians. But politics and companies do respond to voters and consumers like you. So if they should change, say you want them to. And when it comes to food, you can say this every single day. Every time you're at a shopping mall, you can invest in hope for all. With every meal you can begin to create the world you want to live in. So be the change you want to see. And when it comes to me, I really like to eat chicken's eggs or meat. But it has never brought me as much pleasure as seeing the treasure that lies behind their eyes. I was blind, for the person I'm now learning to find. Seeing a rescued being spread their wings feels like I entered a world that leaves me enchanted though I only get a glimpse of their beauty, individuality, personality, empathy, happiness when they are free, emotional complexity. They share with you and me, which I kind of felt but refused to see while I used them like commodities. When we relinquish meat, we might see there's no need to distinguish between those we are used to make use of and those we love. We might find ourselves seeing that we're not only freeing another being, but we escape our own prison called speciesism. I've never thought how much it could impassion to widen our circle of compassion. With every child who could think of tomorrow with less sorrow, may it be your daughter or your son or anyone we are one. With every spark of compassion in your heart that wants to heal and to feel this world of which we're all a part. With every acre of land, every plant, every tree, every being in your hand we could learn to understand and set free. It's getting harder not to see that the greatest contradiction is a description of veganism as a restriction. That's a fiction. Just picture how attractive a definition of vegan would sound if it didn't just tell us from what we abstain, but also what we gained.